those are going to count there. And then oils, we need essential oils. We're going to get some of them from our fish, the omega-3 fatty acids, our body, those are essential oils, our body needs them. But then virgin olive oils, flaxseed, other omega-3s and omega-6s. It's best not to heat the oils. You can, but it's best not to. Why? It, de it denaturizes the, uh, the valve. That, again, anytime you heat anything, it, it breaks up the enzymes and the chemical makeup of the product. Could I ask a question about your fruits? Yeah. What about bananas, grapes, <coughs> apples, oranges? They're, they're more of a sugar, so there's more sugar in them. So they're other, not the most optimal. They're not the most optimal. We can still do them. Mm -hmm. I do, yeah. you know, but it's, it's we're just it's, if we wanted just the most optimal, I guess is what I'm laying down. But uh, I still do, them, you know, so that's okay. But then I try to do them uh, alone, you know, in, in a one in one of my meals. The poison of processed foods. Major kinds of fats we eat are saturated, polyunsaturated, monosaturated, and trans fatty acids. I think you guys know probably a lot of the stuff about the fats. Processed fats are fast destroyed through cooking at temperatures above 118 degrees. That's how they make the processed fats. And they're, they're unstable and toxic to our body. They result in an acidic state in our body, which puts our body into a survival mode. Americans consume 35 to 40% of their total calories from fat. So we got fat, we got sugar, and grains. This is making up a lot of the typical American diet. Man-made or processed fats are made from liquid oil. Foods that contain processed fats are the butter, margarine, cheese, whole milk, animal flesh meats, egg yolks, vegetable oil, shortening, deep fried food. Obviously you need to avoid deep fried foods. Dangers of bad fats, obviously poor circulation, cholesterol, you know, that's what a lot of the problems are going to come from. Trans fatty acids and hydrogenated fats tend to raise total blood cholesterol. You know, we need to limit commercial baked goods, cookies, pastries, and crackers. Limit our snack foods and chips. They're going to have all the non-hydrogenated oils in them. Are all fats bad? No, right? There's good fats that we need, and they're a major source of energy in our body, and they're called omega-3s, omega-6s, omega-9s, especially in a balanced diet, but most diets, again, are omega-6 toxic. The good unsaturated fats include essential oils and omega-3s. If you completely eliminate fat from your diet, it's the worst thing you can do. You know, they went through a fat revolution where they were saying no fat, low fat, stuff like that. That's bad. Our body needs fats, but it needs the good fats. They help lower our risk of heart disease and stroke. Every cell in our body requires them to function. Without them, the membranes would break down. They make up our cell membranes. They make our cells strong. A lot of times when you see uh, a person that's overweight, you see the dimply skin, that's because their cells are so weak. That's what makes them uh, dimple like that. They're breaking. They're weak. If the cells were stronger, then they wouldn't show that, uh, those signs. Unsaturated oils are used by the body for construction of cell walls, and they also help with nerve function. I just read a study last week about omega-3s and essential oils and how it can help with mental function and emotional function of the brain. You know, that they're um, doing some research with that as far as helping people that are depressed. Natural unprocessed fats, major functions. Build cell membranes, I mentioned that. Aid in production of hormones, it's huge. Raise metabolism and create energy. Protect the body by buffering and neutralizing the acids. It's, it's a big one in that pH thing, buffering the acidity. Provide lubrication of the body so that the cells are free to move. Unprocessed fats in a natural state includes avocados, virgin olive oil, almonds, hazelnuts, Brazil nuts, raw sunflower seeds, flaxseed oils. The, dang, the poison of dairy products. A lot of this came from the China study with Tim Flo and Campbell. The milk myth. You know, the medical field and the dairy producers encourage people to drink milk and they make it vogue and put a white mustache on people and encourage them to eat their dairy products because it's good for the body, but it couldn't be further from the truth. 
Recent studies show the effects of dairy contributing to osteoporosis, kidney problems, and certain forms of cancer. Women who consume diets rich in animal foods and dairy excrete more calcium in their urine, providing a negative calcium balance, which increases the risk of osteoporosis. What can be done to prevent osteoporosis? According to Campbell from the China study, he recommends stay physically active, use it or lose it. If you stress the bone, then it will uptake more calcium. It needs to be done with resistance exercise, which is rubber bands or weights. It's not just through riding your elliptical or walking on the treadmill. You need resistance to all the bones in the body. So you have to re lift resistance. He also says, uh, um, eat a variety of whole plant foods. Avoid animal foods, including dairy. Keep refined salt to a minimum. So you can have Celtic sea salt, that's different, but refined bleached salt, table salt, keep to a minimum. Get vitamin D. It's getting sunshine time, so we can get our vitamin D from the sunshine. We should have body exposure to the sun, but in the Midwest from October to March, we should supplement with vitamin D3. You can't ignore the research out there right now about D3, everything from immune system to cancers to flu prevention to bone health, vitamin D. What's the difference between vitamin D and vitamin D3? It's a different part of the absorbability of the tocopherols, they call it, the vitamin D. And so from what I read, in the liquid form, vitamin D3 is the most absorbable, usable form if we're taking it as a supplementation. Also, avoid caffeine, alcohol, and tobacco. That's going to create an acidic body. In an acidic state, your body leaches calcium out of the bones and magnesium out of the cells to buffer the acidity. So we talked about this last week. So when you take in acid nutrition, processed foods, sugars, pop, caffeine, that creates an acidic state in your body, so your body immediately goes into survival mode because it's smart and it's trying to save your life, so it leaches alkaline buffers out of your body, which is calcium out of the bones and magnesium out of the cells to buffer the acidity. That causes osteoporosis. What is calcium and why do we need it? Calcium is a mineral that the body needs for numerous functions, including building and maintaining bones, teeth, blood clotting, nerve impulses, and regulation of the heart rhythm. 99% of the calcium in the human body is stored in the bones and the teeth. 1% is found in the blood and other tissues. There's two ways your body can get calcium. By eating calcium-rich foods, or pulling, cal pulling it from your bones, which again is that acidic state, it pulls it from your bones. Calcium-rich foods, that's gonna be the greens, is where you get it. Where do you think the cow gets her calcium? She doesn't drink milk after she's weaned from her mother. She gets it from her dark green leafy vegetables, which she probably calls grass. Where does the ape or the gorilla, the strongest mammal on the planet, get his calcium? He doesn't drink milk from a cow. It's from the leaves and the roots and the grass. Animal proteins, processed foods, sugar, coffee, and soda, and other acidic foods increase the acidic load in your body. A recent study of the Journal of Pediatrics suggests that boosting consumption of milk and other dairy products is not the best way to provide the minimal calcium intake. Protein and calcium needs are greatest when you are an infant. True? True. When they study human breast milk and they break the chemistry down, what, is it, what, is, what does it most look like, that chemistry? Fruit. Less than 2% of mother's breast milk is protein. Breast milk has a similar chemistry as fruit. As, babies, as the baby's body grow, it learns to recycle proteins in the system. More consequences of dairy. Allergies. Our bodies do not make the enzyme lactase. After 